Hey guys, as so many of my Forge viewers are still on Minecraft 1.16.5, I thought it would be worth covering another video. Since I'm not covering this version in my Mods of the Week videos, I thought I'd take a look at some of the great mods that were released over the past month. Looking at Curse Forge, it seems that over 500 mods have been released in this time, so even though there's so many to choose from, I'll just be covering some of my favorites, and these are all for Forge. Traveler's Titles adds cool RPG-like titles into Minecraft, which appear on your screen when you enter different biomes and dimensions. This is one of Young's mods, who's known for their high-quality work. The mod supports all custom biomes as well as some custom dimensions like the Twilight Forest, the Lost Cities, and more. There's also lots of customization when it comes to colors, position, size, and duration, and it's a client-side mod. Cold Sweat is a survival mod, adding a new temperature mechanic to the game. On the screen, you can find the world temperature next to your hotbar, as well as your player's status above your health, and in the inventory screen. The temperature is affected by the biome you're in, as well as the blocks you're next to. And if you get too hot or cold, then you'll begin to take damage. You can mitigate temperature with blocks like the hearth, which can regulate the temperature of a room. Or you can use water skins, which need to be placed in a boiler or icebox to change the fluid temperature, which will regulate your body temperature. There's even insulated minecarts. The Masks Hats mod adds hundreds of masks into Minecraft, which can be worn as head items. There's all different themes too, like different emojis, mobs, and even Among Us characters. With there being so many different masks, the recipes might get complicated, so you'll want to use just enough items. Nether Agriculture would go well with those type of mods that force you to survive in the nether. You can get foods like warped berry bushes, crimson berry pies, oglin meat, bean sauce, and more. The mod doesn't just include food as there are new sets of tools which are made from blazing gold as well as new blocks, enchantments, and potions. X-Line's Furniture adds some new items to decorate your home with. You'll find chairs, tables, ceiling fans, windows, drapes, and a few more minor items. A lot of items have interactions too, like how if you place a cauldron under a faucet, you can fill it up. Immersive Cooking is an add-on for Farmer's Delight, adding lots of new options. It includes 45 different counters, which are made from different types of wood and have different materials for the countertop. There's also glazed tiles for decoration, as well as a stove hood. Some of the new foods are potato cubes, potato slices, diced onions, and spider cutlets. Far-sighted mobs should make dealing with hostile mobs a little harder. The range that they can see you from has been increased to 24 blocks, an increase from 16 blocks in the vanilla game. Hard softcore adds a bit more of a challenge when you're not playing in hardcore. Each time you die, your maximum health will be reduced by one heart. There are two new totems, with the first being the Totem of Vitality, which will give you one heart back. If you craft the Totem of Rebirth, then all of your missing hearts will be restored. Another client-side mod is Loot Beams, which adds beams of light to items that are on the ground, which reminds me of the Borderlands games. There's a few different colors, with the light color indicating the rarity of the item. Throwability allows you to throw any item you like. Make sure to check your controls under the inventory section to find the right key. When you hold the button down, a bar will change up, and the higher you charge your throw, the further the item will go. Another mod from Young is Better Dungeons, which transforms the default dungeon while adding three new ones. There are the Catacombs, Fortress of the Undead, and the Spider Caves. These structures are huge and are so much more interesting to explore than the small box rooms provided by default. Like in the spider caves, you'll find rooms filled with nests, which you'll need to break into to destroy the spawner, and there's multiple nest rooms to clear out. And the skeletal dungeon is more like an evil underground lair, with plenty of loot to search for. Lightning charges can be used to summon lightning wherever you'd like. You can craft them from Ender Pearls, Glowstone Dust, and Ghast Tears. Epic Knights adds lots of new weapons and armor into Minecraft, which makes you feel like you're playing a medieval game. When it comes to armor, you'll find seven different helmets, which can be matched with different plate bodies, leggings, and boots. Whereas there's so many new weapons, which all have multiple tiers, 
and the weapon types include bladed swords, halberds, maces, lances, and hammers. The mod is also designed to work with the Epic Fight mod, and the developer has big plans for the mod. The Swamp Expansion mod starts by adding the Wild Rice plant, which you can obtain rice seeds from to grow your own rice. You can place the rice into a bucket of water to cook it, and this rice can then be turned into food items like fried rice, dango, and sushi. There's also cattails, which spawn naturally and their roots can be eaten, as well as new swamp-specific mushrooms. These mushrooms can be placed into a jar as a small light source or into the new mushroom basket. Raccoons are passive mobs which can't be tamed, and they have their own sounds and animations, although they will follow you if you're holding onto a trash bag item, which is included with the mod. And trash bags can also be used to create trash cans, which can be right-clicked to give some different items like bones, rotten flesh, and gunpowder. Zombie Nation adds some more variants to zombies, which can be normal or tough, with the tough zombies having a health and damage boost. There are eight different zombies, and some are the zombies in a hazmat suit, which makes it immune to potions. There's the frozen lumberjack, who spawns in colder biomes and is slower than other zombies. Zombie warriors can be equipped with swords, which have the sharpness 5 effect, making them strong. There's also the zombie Alex, Husk Girl, and more, with them also having some different sounds. You can even be infected by zombies, and you'll need to find a cure within 3 days, or you'll die. Undead Expansion is a fun mod, with the major feature being that you can create your own spawners, and you should craft the Necromantic Table to get started. By applying the Reaping Enchantment to your sword, you can obtain souls from mobs. By combining a soul with items like Ender Pearls, Rotten Flesh, or Bones inside a Necromantic Table, you can turn it into mob essences, which can be used on the included empty spawners to convert them into regular mob spawners. Some new mobs included are the Demon, Ghoul and Ghost, who all drop items from the mod. You'll also be able to craft some new sets of armor, tools, and masks. Second Chance gives you a few ways to save yourself in dire moments, like the Coyote Time mechanic, where you can still jump as soon as you fall off a ledge, allowing you to correct your mistake. But the main feature is that if you have 7 hearts or more, something that would normally kill you will now only leave you on a half of a heart, giving you that second chance. Sea and Prehistory reminds me of a small side quest from an RPG. To get started, you'll need to search for the archaeologist's cave underground. Inside here, you'll find creatures like snails and dragonflies, with there also being lots of containers with loot to collect. You'll want to find the quartz hammer, break up the nautilus shell on the table to get bait and place it in your offhand slot, and use it to summon sturgeon, the mini-boss when fishing. You can obtain pearls by hammering the nautilus shell, which are used to create an osmina ring which permanently gives the dolphin's grace and conduit power effects when in your offhand slot. The Dark Caverns is a new dimension located in the depths below bedrock, and to get there you'll need to obtain a map from a master cartographer. The map will lead you to the Forgotten Tower, which is controlled by some hostile enemies you'll need to defeat. Before you can obtain the key to the caverns from one of the chests, you'll need to use the key on some cracked bedrock on the bottom layer, which will open a portal. Head inside and be very careful, as the caverns itself are hundreds of blocks high, but they look really impressive. Inside, you'll find all sorts of ores, which can be used in the creation of some new armor and tools. The dimension is filled with new blocks, creatures, sounds, and more, and this mod probably needs its own spotlight. Wilds aims to improve on vanilla Minecraft, and it seems right now that it overhauls the savanna biome. It's got new terrain, which is made up of new blocks like scorched soil and termite mounds, which in general does really improve on the biome. There are some new creatures too, like the koala, armadillo, and lizard. Some new craftable items are the beer, koala cap, armadillo chest plate, and barley stew. Another new creature comes with red pandas. You can find them inside bamboo jungles and feed them bamboo to heal them. Currently, they can't be tamed and don't do much, but the developer has some plans for them in the future, and they just make a nice addition to your world. Structures Plus 2 adds over 40 structures into your world, which can be found across lots of biomes, as well as all three dimensions. They range in size and styles, with you coming across houses, towers, dungeons, hot air balloons, and so much more. 
Lots of these structures are great to build from, and you can even find new locations underground. Powerful Totems adds over 20 new totems, and they all have crafting recipes. Some of the most interesting are the Magnet Totem, which will suck nearby items into your inventory when activated, the Fall Totem, which will remove fall damage for two minutes, the Golem Totem, which will summon an Iron Golem, and the Water Totem, which will summon a water source. The Mushroom Fox mod adds two new biomes to start with, which are the Muddy Hills and Fall Forest. In these biomes and other locations, you might stumble across some structures like ruins, towers, and pits. If you come across a portal frame, you can repair it and use the forgotten key to step inside, which takes you to a dark desert-like dimension which you can explore. And mob-wise, you can find the mushroom fox, which can be tamed, the cookie chicken, which drops cookies, and the sand snake, which you can find in deserts. Lifesteal enchantments have shown up in a few mods, and they allow you to retrieve life from the targets that you attack. With this mod, the level of your enchantment determines the amount of health that you gain per attack. That's the end of this list. I might do another one like this soon, but I'll have my Mods of the Week video coming again next, with a planned resource pack video too, so make sure to stick around for that.